the disembodied mind. That is going to be the topic of this episode of Chi Life. I've had a couple of interactions with different people quite recently that has brought this topic to the fore for me and I thought it might be interesting to discuss a little bit. Uh, and it's been interactions where people have expressed this idea that you've probably come across where people, you know, just, just have an idea that uh, all you need to do is think positively about something or, and, and, and that will just change everything. Um, and that's all you need to do. Now, there's no question that the way we think about things, the way we use our mind, has a significant effect of, uh, on our experience of life and on uh, how we're able to deal with different situations. But when we reduce it down to that being the only thing that is having an impact on us and that we can change things by only working with the mind, well, I mean, that's true in some situations, but if we think that's sort of universally true across different experiences, well, that can become quite problematic. Um, and so, yeah, so I, I thought I'd talk about a couple of the, the topics of these interactions that I had with people, uh, and then also about, you know, how this maybe applies to Qigong as well. So the first topic was quite simply about the weather. Um, it's something we often talk about with other people because, you know, some people think that, oh, talking about the weather, it's just so superficial, you, you know, and like, why do people talk about the weather with each other all the time? It's something that we all share in our experience together. Well, if we're in the same part of the world, or even if we're in different parts of the world, we can kind of identify with someone else's experience. So it creates a point of commonality between us. So it makes sense. It's something we can share together and we can connect over. So I don't have a problem with people talking about the weather. It's a, I think it's a completely natural thing for us to do, and that's why we do it. It's something that affects all of us. And so we're talking about the weather. Um, you may know, I've, I've probably mentioned it, uh, at different points so you may have picked up in the vlog um, for the last entire year New Zealand or actually it's not all of New Zealand actually but it's the north part of New Zealand has had an extraordinary amount of rain now that has changed a bit over the last couple of months uh, where we've gone from having an extraordinary amount of rain to a normal amount of rain for this area which is still quite a bit uh, but it hasn't been extraordinary but we we've had an entire year of just you know, three major floods in uh, last summer, and then actually a huge amount of rain before that, quite consistently, and then a huge amount afterwards. And so, and this has an effect on people. Anyway, we were talking about the weather uh, with this one person, and 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 he expressed, "Oh, it's all in your response." And he'd been reading something about how we we just need to change our perspective, and and I, well, yeah. I rebutted that because <laughs> it was like, oh no, that's not that's not actually a healthy point of view to have. Um, again, as I mentioned, that can really lead to some problems. I'll, I'll get to the problems a bit later on. Um, but so I, you know, gently, I, I wasn't. This this wasn't. We didn't have an argument about this or anything. But I just pointed out some really clear, common sense ways that actually it's not just how we think about things. The weather has clear physiological effects on us. Um, yes, we can choose our attitude about things, but we also need to take into account those physiological effects. So a really simple one to look at is our exposure to sunlight. So our exposure to sunlight plays a really important role in our production and release of a whole lot of different hormones. So it plays an important role in the production of melanin, which then allows us to produce melatonin, which then regulates our sleep. Uh, it has an important role to play in uh, producing vitamin D, which then uh, affects our immune system, it affects our calcium metabolism, so therefore the density of our bones, um, it affects our production and release of testosterone, which will again affect our, um, the density of our bones, our muscle mass and strength, our motivation, it affects the release of serotonin, which then uh, affects our overall mood. And these are not imaginary things. These are not things that just by having a positive attitude, it's going to change. 
we need sunlight. <laughs> we, we live, we're biological beings that need some sunlight for some of our vital processes. And we don't, when we don't get enough of that sunlight, it affects us in some really significant ways. So just thinking more positively about the weather doesn't change that. Now thinking more positively is going to affect other, other aspects of how we experience life and, and it may mitigate many different uh, factors you know, relating to the weather. But it also has a physical effect and we need to recognize that. If we're really going to live the best way that we can and to have well the happiest, healthiest lives and be the most productive and all those sorts of things, if we focus on just one thing, that doesn't act and, and, and exclude the other things that are affecting our experience of life and our productivity, all those things, we're not going to get very good results. We need to recognize, yeah, the power of the mind, that's, that's a beautiful thing, it's, that's useful. But we also need to be realistic about understanding the effect of our environment, how that impacts us as well. That's just sunlight. Other aspects of the weather affect us too. You know, when there's a lot of dampness, this is going to affect the, our breathing. Often it's going to create um, molds and mildews, which will affect, again, breathing and, uh, and immunity. And, you know, cold, this is, it, it affects us. It has a real effect. And we need to acknowledge and recognize the effect of our environment in order to live effectively. So that was just one, one small one uh, where it was just like, oh, okay, maybe a little bit of a redirect in the thinking about this. Another one uh, where I was talking to someone recently and we were talking about some of the issues within a particular organization. Now, this is an organization that I have had um, interaction with over the last probably seven years, really, probably a little bit before that. No, yeah some before that as well, but quite extensive uh, interaction with over the last seven years. And this other person has had interaction with this organization for about the last four months, I think it is. Um, and, and she again was, you know, we're talking about some, some of the issues, recurring issues within this organization. And she again sort of expressed this view that, oh, well, but, you know, if, 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 if people think positively about it and, this this will change these issues and uh, we talked further about that and why that was not the case uh because now does does people's attitude have some effect absolutely it does but a lot of this issue the issues within this organization come from the very top management and having had a long interaction with this organization i've seen time and time again where people have come in and they've thought really positively. Um, and then what has happened is either, either they've got really frustrated because they've been positive and they've been motivated and they've wanted to do things and make good changes and they've been so frustrated by other things within the organization and not being able to actually have the impact that they wanted to do that they've then left or Alternatively, they've actually been fired. They've been kicked out because they just haven't fit within the established structures, the established uh, culture within that organization. And so they can come in and think as positively all they like. They haven't been able to make the change. Hmm. And with some discussion, this person I was talking to, she recognized, oh yeah, that's true. Because she was trying to say, oh, we, you know, we take our own, we're talking about cultural change within an organization. It's like, oh yeah, we take our culture with us, you know, to, we, and it's like, yeah, we, we do. But what happens when our culture is either not strong enough to influence the culture around us, uh, because it can be, you know, an individual can come in and, and change the culture within an environment, uh, within a system, and, and, and create positive change. Hopefully they can also create negative change that flows both ways. But if our culture, our energy, our motivation, our personality, our charisma, whatever it is, isn't strong enough to make that change, well then the prevailing culture will either affect us and change how we operate, or we will be moved out of that space, will be incompatible with that space, right? Uh, and with some discussion, she reckoned like, oh yeah, yeah, that's true. It's not just a matter of 
thinking positively uh, in order to make change. Positive thinking, yeah, that's that's a, that's a useful thing. But we need to recognize it's not the only thing. We It will have an effect within our capacity to have an effect, within our amount of influence that we have. So yeah, a couple of, a couple, a couple of examples. I'll, I'll talk about something else quite general around this and how this affects things as well. And this is to do with the way we experience different events and things in our lives. And this is one where it can become quite problematic as well to think that, you know, all that matters is how we think about things. Because sometimes people have quite traumatic events, things that affect them very deeply. And it's true that the way we think about those events does shape how we respond to them. But if we don't then also acknowledge that the event itself did have a deep impact on us, it wasn't something we had control over, we can then end up denying the effect of that event on us and not allowing ourselves to properly process that trauma. Um, properly process all all of the implications of that and how it's affected us. And in these sorts of situations, there's there's a, a becoming more common term for uh, this way of thinking, that just thinking positively will solve everything. And it's good that this is becoming common. Um, and so people often refer to this as toxic positivity, where people have just, you know, decided that all you need to do is think positively. It's not. <laughs> it's not the only thing. It's one thing that's helpful, but we also need to acknowledge, understand, and deal with all of the other things, you know, around a particular situation that we may be in. If we don't, you know, people will, one, in terms of the effect on themselves, you know, someone who's dealing with a, a very traumatic uh, experience that they've had, may then, you know, it, it's in, in a not necessarily worst case scenario, but a fairly bad case scenario, end up blaming themselves. Like, oh, they have created this for them because they didn't think positively enough, right? That traumatic experience may have had nothing to do with how they were thinking. It may have entirely come from external actors and acting on them. Now, how they then respond to that, yeah, that, that has a big impact on them. But they need to recognize, like, hey, we, we actually, yes, we have power in our lives, but we're also interacting with an environment, with other actors within our environment that also have an effect on us. And if we don't do that, we can end up, yeah, blaming ourselves for things that are really not our fault and, and actually not being able to resolve things uh, properly. Similarly, if you carry this attitude of toxic positivity that all you need to do is think positively about things, well, then you, your effect on other people can be to deny their experience, can be to to belittle you know, the experience and the things that they have to go through and things like that. So it's really, it's not a healthy way to think. Now, all of that, as I've mentioned several times, is not to acknowledge that the, the mind is powerful. It can have a big effect on us. Using our mind, learning to harness our mind, can be hugely, hugely beneficial. And we can, when we do this, uh, cope much better with different situations. We can make ourselves much more resilient so that we are able to deal with different situations, different experiences much more effectively. And we can also use our mind as a way of to, to help us process and move through, reinterpret, re-understand, you know, find a way to live in, in, a, in, a, in a rich and positive way. So that's that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. But at the same time, it's not the only thing. We also need to acknowledge the actual effect of our environment, the things that happen to us, the things that happen around us. How does this apply to Qigong? Well, um, Qigong in many ways is the study of life, right? Because energy is life in a way. And so just understanding this as a broad principle, I think does affect us and it affects our energy. I think practicing Qigong also really helps us to understand this principle in an embodied way. Because within Qigong, we generally use three main tools. 
We use the mind, the body, and the breath. Sometimes we use other ones. We actually actively work with things in our environment, and then we engage with them with our mind, our body, and our breath. But we, you know, we inherently actually do use our environment as well in different ways. But primor primarily, mind, body, and breath. And the mind is powerful. It's a powerful tool within Qigong, but so is the body. And we combine these together. We use them harmoniously together in order to have the most powerful effects. Breath being the mediating um, force between the mind and the body, connecting mind and body uh, very effectively. And so combining these together, we're most uh, effectively able to work with our energy. Not just one, not just the other, but using them together. And so by practicing Qigong, we gain a rich embodied experience of the importance of both the mind and the body and of their connection. That it's not just one or the other. The mind doesn't exist just by itself without the body. The body doesn't really exist without the mind either. They're powerful together and we acknowledge the role of both of these. And so we gain a grounded experience of how to use our mind. That it is in connection with our body as well. Anyway, that was the, the topic for the vlog today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you on another one soon.